Everyone, this three questions, Jason Schaefer. There you go, buddy. Jason from Orlando. All right. I am like so excited. Jason and I have been talking uh, for a while. We met years ago and uh, at when you were in South Miami. And uh, weirdly enough, you moved to Orlando. I moved to Orlando. I came a little bit further than you. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's a little bit fair. Hey. Uh, I bet you uh, Brandon Boston. I know Brad, Brandon. Uh, Joe McGettigan. And if they're listening by a chance, I just want to give them a little, <laughs> give them a little shout out because they're wonderful people. But oh, yeah. Jason, I will tell you, um, I very distinctly remember meeting you there. Uh, we connected after the fact, and you have done some really incredible work. It's stuff that I'm very passionate about. And I have shared your work with so many administrators talking about how basically you really help students to create an online presence. It was like basically part of your school culture. You are currently at um, Lakeland. Is it Lakeland High? Lake Highland. Prep? Lake Highland, yeah. Lake Highland. Sorry, Lake. I don't know why I said Lakeland. I just added stuff, right? Nice so place. Lake High Prep. And so, hey, Cheese, if you're listening, and everyone. <laughs> oh, just say, hey, I said hit the rock horn. <laughs> I met Cheese, just so you know, Cheese, if you're listening. I remember you, buddy. So I uh, met some great people um, from your school. And Jason has a book called Brand Up that he wrote with Stacy Ross Cohen and who, sorry, I can't, my eyes are bad. Alan Katzman is the LinkedIn guru. Oh, right. And Alan Katzman. So before we get into the three questions, can you just do a, a quick, like one minute synopsis? What is the book Brand Up? It is a book, workbook, guidebook for students, high school age, community college age, even uh, those who are just looking to start out in the uh, career uh, landscape and find who they are so that they can make the right choices and fit into the right cultures, um, promote themselves online, tell their stories, share their experiences. And the easiest way I could sum it up is help people fall in love with you, right? right. Tell, the, tell the stories that are going to connect and make for interesting conversations when you're in that interview. And then chances are you're going to get hired because of the connections more than the qualifications anyway. Yeah. And there's like that. I think that's such, such an important aspect, right? Like if you look at, for example, you know, there's this culture like, oh, like kids have to have really good grades and stuff like this too. I think we were talking about this before. I didn't have good grades in school. You didn't have good grades and we're, we're both doing well, but their kids are more than what grades could ever tell. And I think that it's not just about preparing kids to um, apply for jobs, but actually opportunities finding them, whether it is um, a, a place that they want to work at. Maybe it's like a, a side gig. Me, to be honest with you, many students I'm seeing are becoming entrepreneurs. I remember there is this, I'm a big basketball shoe guy. And I remember this kid was like 12 years old and he started his own like basically like shoe company. And just, it was just incredible how connected he was, how he used, you know, social media and he's doing something he's really passionate about. And for me, I, I feel like a lot of times in education, we're trying, we talk about personalized learning, but we're trying to get kids to the same jobs that our parents wish we went to, as opposed to like, Hey, there's different opportunities. There's different passions. Can you follow that? I'm sure this is, you know, you talk about this a lot in the book. Yeah. And that was the origin of where this all started, right? We were trying to revamp a computer class that was outdated mm -hmm. and we were trying to prepare kids for an uncertain future. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to focus on particular uh, websites or social media apps because we didn't know what the future looked like. So if we could train kids to be good humans, to love themselves, to respect themselves, then mm -hmm. hopefully they're going to avoid some of the pitfalls, right? That we are going to see our young people on Instagram or TikTok uh, fall into because they don't have that character development yet. And so mm -hmm. again, I think that's really what my work has been about and what this book is about. It's helping them just figure out who they are. It's not easy. Right. Yeah. And like, well, I, I, we're going to get way more into this in, in the next podcast, but this is something I always say to people. If your worst 10 minutes were online, would any of us have a job? And, and the reality of it is I watch educators and I'm like, I wouldn't have a job. You wouldn't have, I don't know you well enough, but I, I would put money. You wouldn't have a job. And I watch people in the room and they're like sorting between which 10 minutes is worse and which one would get them fired quickest. Right. And so a lot of times when people talk about, students and like oh they're so irresponsible i'm like they're just doing stuff 
that we all did, but online. The, that there, there's, a, there's not much of a difference. We all said stupid things. We all did dumb things. We still do dumb things, to be honest with you. We just probably are more cognizant of, hey, just don't post this online because there's a context. But I think that's a reality. But we'll, we're going to talk more about this. But hey, yeah. everyone listening, uh, check out the book, Brand Up. Uh, I know from Jason's work, not only is it totally relevant to what we're doing, but he's gonna, he has a ton of strategies, you know, with, with Stacy Ross Cohen and I, hopefully we're gonna get Stacy on, on the podcast as well. We talked a little bit about that, um, to talk about the books. I think it's really important, but let's get into the three questions. Okay. And, uh, the first one is, and I met some of your administrators. I've met some of the people you work with. I know you work with some inspiring people. Um, but when you think about a teacher who really inspired you, whether it was as a student, whether as a colleague, who's someone that you think of and why? So I have to go to, as a student, and I, I think about my theater teacher in high school. Uh, I was a new kid. I had moved here from New York, and she recognized something in me. Um, I don't think it was talent. I think it was. <laughs> I think right. it was something else. Like I better help this boy. Um, <laughs> but she trusted me, and right. for the first time, I think in my life, I found someone who not only would give me opportunities, but trusted that I could do something with them. And she mm -hmm. did that with everybody. Um, she was the kind of teacher that all the kids hung out with in the, you know, during lunch. And if you were going to skip school and get busted, you were going to tell her and she was going to get you out of trouble. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, as a, as a student, that was something that was really important because I have great parents, mm -hmm. but when you're that age, 17, you don't trust your parents. I didn't at least. Right. But this was someone that I could. And I have a vivid memory of like, I had auditioned for the school play or something like that. And she called me and she's like, you know, I want to know how you're feeling. Like, I want to put you in the chorus because you have a strong presence, but I know you want to be the lead in the show. And I said, you know, listen, I just want to make the show as good as it can be, whatever that means, let's do that. And then I get to school the next day and I, my name was at the top and she had made the decision that, you know, that was going to be, my, my, my spot. And she earned my respect, but I think it was because I earned hers in a way. Right. Um, and that's something I've never forgotten. And it wasn't a lesson in the classroom. It was a, a teachable moment on the phone at eight o'clock at night on a Wednesday. Wow. And to, to see that a teacher could have a relationship with a student um, and then not only be willing to make the phone call, but then act on the conversation let me know that my teachers, or at least this one specifically, they weren't there just to get a paycheck. And I didn't know how low they were back then, but um, they weren't there to discipline me. And I guess some kids have this idea that mm. my teachers are trying to punish me. They're out to get me. They're... This was maybe my first moment of realizing that that wasn't the case. Right. And if someone I trust, someone to this day who I still reach out to, you know, 30 years later, mm. um, we had a 20 year high school reunion. I don't know anyone that went. We had a 20 year theater reunion and we all went to that one. Wow. So the family that she created and she invited not just our grade, but she invited every kid who she taught. Mm -hmm. um, and we all came. And I love that. It was amazing. And it it's something that sticks with me as an educator. I don't think that I can deliver content to kids who don't trust me or mm -hmm. who don't want to spend their time with me. And we spend I spend so much time building relationships and I'm going to give her credit for that, at least in some way for mm -hmm. showing me that, you know, a phone call on a Wednesday to, to discuss a hard decision she had to make. She was willing to do that with a kid. And, uh, I don't know that's, it stands out as something really special. Well, if she's listening right now, I'm going to give her a little shout out. Right. So I love that. This yeah. is, uh, you know, there's, I, there's this thing I'm seeing, uh, People are getting really frustrated. They're like, oh, these ed consultants, have you tried relationships? And I'm like, you know, if you're talking like that, you know, <laughs> probably you're probably just got bigger issues. I've because I've seen that from teachers, right? And the reality of this is I, I sometimes empathize because the reality, if you're saying stuff like that, it's because you probably don't have a good relationship with your administrator who's not maybe advocating for you, who's not connecting with you because people, the reality of this is when you build relationships, when people trust you, they're more likely to do great things. They're more likely to step outside and do things that they wouldn't do if they, if they didn't really trust you. And 
there, I saw something, I think it was on Edutopia just recently. Uh, they posted something that said basically simply greeting kids in the hallways actually provides an extra hour of instructional time because you're dealing with less classroom management. You're dealing with less, you know, less other oh. things. So you're actually getting to go deeper. George, and, <laughs> right? it's funny you say that, right? Because people ask me, what did you learn in college? And I said, right. there's one thing I learned in college and it's from a Harry Wong video and yeah. it's stand by your door and say hello. And for Love 18 it. years, I've never missed a period. That's I, awesome. I, I think it's the most important thing I do. Right. And you're now I think that's so important because the work that you're doing is new. It's different. It probably makes some students. And honestly, I guarantee that some of the adults very uncomfortable. Yeah. You have to build those relationships. So I, I love that story. So let's get to the administrators because I know that relationship with the administrators we just talked about is is really, really crucial. So you work with some great administrators right now. I know you've worked with them in the past because uh, I've been able to meet some of them. But when you think of like an administrator, whether it's a kid, um, whether it's a, a staff member, who's someone you really think of that inspired you and why? Yeah, there's no uh, second place here. There's a first place and then everybody else is 15th. Right. And this is someone you've met. And that's Dr. Joan McGettigan. Yeah. Um, she was our ed tech uh, director for the lack of remembering her actual title. Mm -hmm. And I was her daughter's social science teacher and soccer coach. And one day she pulled me into the office and said, Jason, there's something special about you. I don't know what it is other than my daughters come home and talk about your class every day. They don't mm -hmm. talk about anything else. Only, and to be honest, and I'm just not tooting my own horn, I have heard that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that I cherish. Like it makes me cry when I think about it, right? Yeah. She said this to me and I didn't know where she was going with it. Um, but she said, listen, Jason, I don't know what your experience is. I don't really know you very well, but I want to make you an offer to sort of revamp our, our computer applications course. And I have a vision, but I don't really know what I want to make out of it. I kind of need you to do that. George, I had never been on Twitter. I had a mm -hmm. Facebook page that I was probably like, got a haircut today. <laughs> and here Jason she was. was getting a haircut. Today. Yeah very short and and for her to take a risk on right. me um she trusted me to create something that was going to be a requirement for graduation and man did i work my tail off for her mm -hmm. so that i can do it but without her um there is no book without her i've never i would have never spoken at a single conference and i think up mm. i've probably spoken at about 20 different events at this point um, my self-confidence, which I still lack, would have been much less uh, without her. Uh, she is responsible for almost everything I do today mm -hmm. in terms of opportunity. I believe that I work my tail off and I earn that, right. but I often am offered things before I earn them. And then mm -hmm. I earn them after the fact. Yeah. And this is one of those scenarios. Um, she was a visionary. And she, to, to be honest... There was a point where it almost became, hey, this is Jason's stuff. And I'm the only one who knew in the back of the room that this is her vision mm -hmm. that she trusted me with. And at every corner, I did my best to sort of always throw that out there. And I'm doing that right now, right? Yeah. Um, because I always felt like I was getting credit for her dream. And it was mm -hmm. weird and uncomfortable in a way. But at the same time, like this was my career and I wanted to make the most of it. So for me, what I saw her do was the behind the scenes answer every question possible, even if it takes work to find the answer. So like the first time I ever saw someone reach out to an airline because they lost their bag, right. it was her like, Jason, don't you know, you can go on Twitter and be like, Hey, jet blue, you lost my luggage. Where is it? And I didn't know that kind of power existed. Right. right. Um, just wasn't what I was doing. And we met every day, two or three hours, every planning period I had after school, working together to craft this new course that the world had never seen yet. Right. Again, it was being dramatic a little bit, but, um, and then you showed up one day <laughs> and my kids were listening to you present and they're like, Mr. Schaefer, he sounds just like you. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's because I'm learning from him. And that, that's, <laughs> let's be clear on that. But like, you know, if, if you were my administrator, you'd probably be the one I'm talking about now. But for 
I love that. I, I know who you are because of her. And she brought me to a conference where you were a keynote and invited me to the administrator's oh, right. lunch. FTC. And I wasn't an administrator, but she invited me to that luncheon. You did an amazing job getting everybody. Dude, I've never seen anybody do this where I don't know if you still do this, where you had everybody play rock, paper, rock, paper scissors. scissors. Yeah. Dude, it was brilliant. And I've ne- to me, that was like a whole new world. And again, that's her. And when I started speaking, I didn't have the confidence. So we would go on stage together. And then slowly but surely, mm. she sort of reminded me, hey, dude, this is your stuff. I love like, that. Just trust yourself. And I have to give her a lot of credit for that. Joan, if you're listening, <laughs> Joan, I actually, Joan uh, really stuck out to me uh, in my travels. And she is absolutely incredible. When you, when you told that story, um, I, I always talk about, you know, I'm the same way with you. Kelly Wilkins was that first for me and wasn't even anybody ever close. And I remember she hired me to, she actually had a middle school position uh, available at her school. And it was like really interesting because it didn't, it wasn't middle school math. It wasn't middle school. They basically said, let's find the best person that we can find. And then we'll tailor the job to them. Wow. And so it was like a really interesting because we can move people to like different disciplines, but let's just find someone really amazing. So, you know, they got to fit the school culture, you know, you know, where we want to go. So they hired me because they saw the skills I had with like, you know, how I I looked at educational technology was pretty forward thinking, you know, at the time. And she said to me, so I've been there for a year and she said, Hey, we're doing the budget. What would you spend the money on? I said, well, that's not really my, not really my purview. You're the administrator. You know, I'm a teacher here. She's like, George, I hired you for you to help me make those decisions, right? Why, why would I make those decisions when I put you in that place? And that was like, it was the same thing as you talked about. She gave me responsibility that I was not used to having. And then I was like, okay, I have to really think about this because when I hear teachers complain, they have too much of this or they don't have enough of this, it's actually gonna be my fault, right? <laughs> I can't just say, oh, I have that principle. You know, that principle now it's like you're so now what what she had done very well. And I think it's the same with Joan. She saw me as creating something that even though I was a classroom teacher had an impact on the entirety of the school. So that gave me ownership over the school, which made me want everyone to do better. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what Joan and Kelly do really well. And so Joan very well deserved. And yeah, and I appreciate the kind words about FETC because that was that. A uh, great opportunity. I met so many awesome people there. And so I, I'm glad that resonated with you. So last question, um, you've had tremendous learning. You've even talked about some of your growth right now. But if you can go back to your first year of teaching and you could talk to yourself, what advice would you give first year Jason? Don't quit. Um, I was defeated after my first year. I was not prepared. I was in a school that uh, was a different socioeconomic background than I was used to. I didn't have a, I didn't have a clue. I mean, to be completely mm-hmm. honest, my punishment strategies were things that if I saw today, um, I would probably ask for the teacher to be removed. Hmm. It's, it was, it was embarrassing what I thought I was doing to manage a classroom when really what I was doing was hiding the fact that I had no idea what I was doing. Hmm. Ironically though, um, because it was a really tough school. There weren't a lot of people who were even willing to keep going. Mm. Um, but I came back <laughs> year two um, and was a little bit wiser. Um, I had a little bit more experience. But Jason, 2005, oh, 2005, oh my God, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, I would just tell him that you need to read more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to practice your craft more. Uh, you need to focus on the things that you can control and not worry so much about the things that you can't, um, you can't do it all. And these are children and no matter what you need to love them every single day, even when they are really, really hard to love. Mm -hmm. And I did figure that out. Like, so Jason today knows that, um, boy, uh, I would smack myself. (laughs) <laughs> well at least you didn't smack any of the kids but who knows no, right? i didn't <laughs> but but it was it wasn't good it wasn't good right well and that that's uh you know the 
the vulnerability you had just sharing that I think is, is something that's a really important message. And I, I appreciate that because I think, you know, from, we talk a lot about branding, we'll talk about online presence. I think a vulnerability is really important because we live in this time where the adults, especially, I'm going to be honest with you, politically, they never make an error ever. And then you have <laughs> other adults cheering them on. Like, and it's like everything that we look for in the people that are leading us that we say online actually is the opposite of people we'd want to work for. And I, I think about that all the time. And I, I think that these are spaces that I, I just posted about this today. I want my kids to, I look at everything I do online as basically a diary I'm leaving to my kids. Yeah. And I want to talk about some of this, the dumb stuff I've done. I want to talk about some of the big lessons I've learned and that takes a vulnerability. And I appreciate you sharing that because a lot of times when we're talking about what we do in these spaces, it's all about we're awesome. We're the best. And then people don't ever admit, you know, maybe I was wrong there. You know, I could have done this better or here's what I would have done differently if you go back. And I think that's one of the reasons I asked this question is because I think it is important to share that vulnerability because we are creating a culture where, uh, it, you, sh you don't, you don't ever apologize. That's a terrible thing to do because people turn on you. Don't show humility. Just, just, you're always right. And I think that to me is we have to, you know, model something different. I so appreciate you doing this. So Jason, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Everyone check out the book brand up. It's linked down below. I know it's going to actually really help you. Um, it's going to help your kids, but this is, this is something I think if you don't pay attention to it now, it's going to be too late, uh, you know, if you if you wait five years, because I think a lot of this stuff is being built right now. And if we're not helping students with this, we say like, hey, let's get them ready for SATs, ACTs, whatever, whatever. But this is actually making a big impact. If you really want to help kids in the world right now, this is this is one of the ways that we really help them to find their own pathway. So, Jason, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Uh, congrats on the book. And I'm so glad to to dig into it more with you. So everyone, thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>